Keep it, toss it. Keep it, toss it, toss it, toss it. Already tossed it, toss it. Is that crazy? Okay, today I'm working on my solar project. I've ripped everything off the solitude a couple weeks ago, and now I'm putting it on the reflection, and I've laid everything out on a picnic table. One, I'm just making sure I still have all the parts and pieces from the solitude. I kind of wired them all up together as if I was gonna, you know, connect it on the reflection. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to go over all the parts and pieces that I've been using for four years. I know what is out here has been tried and true for four years, traveling all over the place. And so I'm gonna go over my inverter, the solar controller, all the wires and switches. I'm gonna go over the inverter and how the battery connects the whole system together. So I'm going to go over the 12 volt system and then the uh, 120 volt system, which are really two separate systems. The only similarity is that they're both connected to the ground of the RV. But first, if you don't know who I am, my name is Larry. I'm with a channel called Downsizing Makes Sense, and we do a lot of DIY projects like this. I put my solar system on my solitude four years ago. I had to rip it off because we had to switch rigs. And now I'm putting it all right back on this reflection. It's a very similar setup, but where I'm putting it is going to be different. I mean, putting this in the front basement instead of the mid basement, like I did in the solitude, the basement in this, in the reflection is much shorter. It's just too hard for me to work in. And I really want to get my weight as forward as possible in the reflection versus back like we had lots of capacity in the solitude. Before we go ahead and switch all my stuff from the solitude to the reflection, let's go over what's already on this reflection. Now, when we bought this baby, it has what they called forced options, which is a solar package. And the solar comes with a 370 watt solar panel and then a solar controller and it has inverter prep. So I'm gonna go over what that means to my install switching over from the solitude and keep it or am i gonna toss it and i got my 370 watts that came from grand design the good thing for me is they're the same voltage as my panels so i can keep the solar panels the problem is the wire that they have running down to the basement is fully inadequate so i'm gonna have to run my own wire okay i'm in the front basement where grand design has installed their solar controller a 60 amp fury on solar controller and a 60 amp converter i'm going to toss the solar controller and i'm going to toss the converter because i got my own awesome victron one and my inverter will be doing the power of the converter grand design also has put inverter prep up here so they give you a nice place to mount the inverter and they brought wires from the control panel all the way up here to the basement and all the way back. The problem is they use 10 gauge wire and I need six gauge wire. So I am tossing the wire that they brought in. It's actually already in storage. Now, the other thing that Grand Design did is they put a 30 amp breaker for inverter prep in and inverter prep out, but I'm not gonna use either one of those because I'm wiring my whole box to my Victron inverter. The inverter prep they did was probably for a 2000 watt inverter just to power a couple of plugs. All they have is the microwave, the general, and the GFCA. That's all they had set aside for being on inverter. Is that crazy? Today, I'm going through all the components that were in my system that was in the solitude that I'm gonna be switching over here to the reflection. First, I'm gonna go through each component, just kind of naming them. I've got them all laid out here on top of my table, and I should have a good view from above for you to see. And then I'm gonna show how each component connects to each other. I've got them wired up exactly the way I had them in the solitude. I should be able to switch this straight over to the reflection, but just in different places. So some of the wiring uh, might be different than where I had it in the solitude. Okay, first, I'm just gonna go over the components in the system without getting into too much detail, which each one does. First, we've got our Battleborn battery. I have four of these batteries that are connected in parallel. Over here, I have the Victron Multi Plus 2 inverter, which takes the 12 volt energy and turns it into 12 volt energy and then charges the battery in reverse from 120 volts back to 12 volts. On top of that, we have the Color Control GX, which is part of the Victron system that helps me control all the Victron components. Besides that, we have the display for the Smart Shunt. The smart shunt is this device right here, and that's what's connected through the, uh, the negative cables, 
which basically measures all the electricity going to and from the battery. I have my uh, Victron smart solar controller. This basically takes all the energy that comes from the solar panels down the wire into here and then comes back out into the 12 volt system and charges the batteries. In addition to that, I have a couple of components. I have the main cables that go to the battery. This is a 400 amp fuse. That's a catastrophic fuse. It goes to a switch and then it goes to a positive bus bar. That positive bus bar delivers all the 12 volt energy to where it needs to go. From there, we got the uh, switch, which switches the whole uh, you know, RV system on and off. Basically supplies the RVs to a 12 volt power. In addition to that, we have a negative bus bar over here, and this basically where all the negatives uh, connect before it goes to the shunt. In addition to that, I also have this VE bus smart dongle, which connects to Victron uh, inverter because the uh, inverter does not have a Bluetooth built into it. So if you want to communicate in Bluetooth through the inverter, you need to have the dongle. Okay, I'm not gonna go through each component. So I'm gonna start with the batteries and work my up the system. Okay, so first of all, like I said, I have four battle porn batteries that are connected in parallel. I use these connectors right here. I got red ones and black ones to connect the negative and positive sides. And those I'm gonna put in the RV and put them in as compactly as possible in the front basement. From there, we have two cables that come from the batteries. I have a positive cable on that side and then a negative cable on this side. The positive cable comes in from the battery and goes right into a 400 amp catastrophic fuse in case anything happens in the system, this fuse will blow. Connected to that is a switch which turns the whole 12 volt system on and off from the batteries, basically disconnects it from the batteries. That connects to a 12 volt bus bar where all my 12 volt connections are all connected right here. From there, I have a 12 volt connection that connects a switch to a wire that goes to the panel inside the RV and powers the 12 volt panel in the RV. Between the switch and the, uh, the panel in the RV, I have a, uh, a fuse, uh, like a just in case uh, fuse. I think this is a 150 amp fuse. Also from the 12 volt bus bar, we have this main cable right here, this, this uh, big red one, and this goes over to the inverter. We'll get to that in a minute. So as far as the wire gauges, this is a, a four out wire, four out wires, uh, all these big fat ones are four out wires. And then this other 12 volt wire here goes to the solar controller. And this is where the solar controller power is coming in. Now let's go over to the negative wires. The negative wire comes from the battery. This is the main wire, it's a four out wire. It goes directly into the uh, shunt, which is a Victron component. What the shunt does is all the electricity that goes through the negative side gets measured by this shunt and then is sent electronically through the brain of the system. So the, uh, the negative voltage goes through the shunt and then connects to the negative bus bar. All the negative connections, everything that's drawing load in the system is connected to the negative side of the bus bar. So this four out wire that's coming out of the uh, negative bus bar goes into the inverter. Like I said er earlier, there's a big 12 volt coming from the main 12 volt power and then the negative is going into the inverter. So the inverter gets two four out wires coming into it for 12 volts. Now I'm gonna come over here for the rest of the 12 volt system here. This is the solar system. So each solar panel right here, I have six solar panels that are that will be on the roof. And each solar panel has two wires that come out of it, a negative and a positive. These are 10 gauge wires that those are all gonna meet in a box that I get from um, AM Solar. It's called a combiner box. It basically takes all six of those wires in parallel, connects them together, and then they connect to this two gauge wire. This is really heavy wire that I have going that's gonna go from the, uh, the combiner box on the roof and through this long wire down into the basement and then connects to the solar controller. When the wire comes in from these, this big fat two-watt wire from the roof, one of the wires 
goes directly into the negative side of the PV side of the solar controller. The other one, the positive wire comes into the circuit breaker under my 120 amp super car circuit breaker. This is so I can switch off the solar panels. One, I can switch it off and if it overloads, it'll pop. So that's important. So it comes into the circuit breaker, comes out of the circuit breaker, and then goes into the positive side, PV side of the solar controller. So the way the solar controller works, it comes into the PV side, plus and minus on those two wires. It comes out as positive and negative, 12 volt, charging the battery system. The 12 volt uh, positive is connected over here, and then the negative is connected over to the negative bus bar. Now the other two wires I need to show you are the 120 volt system wires. There's four wires that come in to the inverter and four wires that go out of the inverter to the control panel in the RV and supply it. Normally, these wires are connected together and the, the power comes from your plug on the outside of the RV and goes directly to the control panel. The inverter is gonna be right in the middle of these. So basically, we're just gonna cut the cable and put this right in between. Now I'm gonna use new cables because I don't like the cables that come in RVs. Right now, the power comes in from the plug from the outside of my RV to my surge protector, which I have built behind the control panel in the kitchen, goes into the surge protector, comes out of the surge protector, goes to the control panel. So now the inverter is gonna go after the surge protector. So it'll go from the wall to the surge protector to the inverter, from the inverter back out to the control panel of the RV. There's four wires that come in. There's two hots, a neutral and a ground on each side and those connect over here on the inverter. It's pretty easy. That's the nice thing about the Multi Plus 2. Four wires in, four wires out. Very simple. So that explains how the inverter is getting power from the outside. And that is how the system becomes a charger and charges the batteries when you don't have enough solar to charge the batteries. That's where the inverter picks up, turns into charger mode and charges your batteries. Now, when you're not connected to power and you're just using solar, then it works in reverse. And now it takes the battery power and converts that into electrical energy and 12 volt power. And this is where it connects back to on your four wires, your big bit main, these are called six three, and connects back on the six threes, back to the 120 volt system, and then powers your whole 120 volt system. The best part is this happens very seamlessly. If the power goes out, the inverter quickly switches over into inverter power. As soon as the power comes back on, it turns us back into charger mode. Now I'm gonna go through a couple of the other smaller connections that have to do with the Victron system and how the Victron system connects with itself or major components to the Victron system. The MPPT controller, the Smart Shunt, the Color Control GX, the inverter, and the uh, Smart Shunt display. All of these connect with each other. So the first way that they connect, the inverter itself is connected by an ethernet cable from the inverter to the back of the uh, color control GX. A lot of people use the Servo GX, it connects exactly the same way. Now the other connection they have in here is a system called the VE bus, which helps the Victron components communicate with each other. So there's a VE bus cable that comes from this monitor, this is the smart shop monitor, that con con connects to the um, color control GX, so that connects that system. The solar controller also has a VE bus cable, it's a black cable, it comes right here, comes all the way back in here, and then connects back over here on the uh, back of the color control GX. They come with these super long cables because a lot of times you have a long distance between them. One more cable is this cable right here, which connects the smart shunt to the shart, uh, smart shunt uh, control panel. I don't necessarily need this, but it came with my smart shunt. A lot of people won't have a color control GX or a servo, but they'll have one of these. And that doesn't use the VE bus system. It uses um, this uh, connector instead. In addition to that, there's power that comes from the power positive side of the positive bus bar and then powers because the smart shunt needs its own power so it powers in there. In addition to that, there's a temperature sensor that's connected to the smart shunt over here and this picks up the temperature on the battery. It's connected directly to the battery, 
This one has to be connected positive side right there so that it senses the temperature of the battery and that sends that to the system and it keeps, keeps you informed about how hot the batteries are. Now the Color Control GX also needs its own power. So it has its own 12 volt wires that come in here to the uh, Color Control GX. And those all lead back to these red wires right here, the positive that goes on to the positive side. And then there's negative ones that go on the negative side. In addition to that, I have to power the VE bus dongle. Again, it gets a positive one on this side, and then it gets a negative one on the negative side. One other major component I have in my system is separate from the, this system, but is really important is the microwave easy start. This is what I have installed inside the air conditioner. So that way, when the inverter wants to run the air conditioner off of the batteries, it starts the system up much slower than a nor normal air conditioner. It doesn't have that big, heavy-duty amperage hit that's going to throw the uh, inverter into um, a, a fault system. So it basically eases the air conditioner in so that the inverter can handle it. Once it's up and running, the inverter can deliver plenty of power to plow power an air conditioner with the four batteries. Now, with four batteries, I don't get a lot of air conditioner time, but I can use my air conditioner and I've used it lots of times with the inverter. Okay, I hope you like this solar overview and all the components I've taken from my solitude. I'm gonna put on the reflection. Everything eventually should be really in a similar place except for the inverter and batteries are going in the front compartment. Do you have a solar system in your RV? What have you got? Please share your experience and what you've got in your RV down in the comments section. Have you put it in the front basement? Or are you putting in the mid base like we did in the solitude? If you like this video and want to see the entire solar install, which I'll be putting out sometime soon, click the subscribe button and hit the notify so you'll get notified when the next video comes out. I'm also going to leave a playlist right over here of some of our solar projects that we're doing from the solitude to the reflection.